like the hard law. Another state this week moved to make it harder for people to vote. Do you believe it? Republicans in Wisconsin passed a new law drastically reducing early voting in that state. It would eliminate weekend voting entirely and restrict voting on weekdays to no later than 7 p.m. The bill would limit the total hours of early voting a week to 45. The goal, the bill sponsors say, is to make, make statewide standards uniform. But critics say the goal is to help Republicans by limiting the ability of poor minority voters to cast ballots. State Senator Lena, uh, Lena Taylor passionately rebuked her colleagues on the Senate floor out there in Madison, telling them they should be ashamed. I feel like I'm in 1906, fighting the fights that people who came long before me had to fight. That's great. One of the sponsors of this new effort doesn't uh, have much sympathy for anyone prevented from voting. Thanks to the new rules, State Senator Glenn Grothman told MSNBC back in November, quote, between early voting and mail absentee and voting the day of election, you know, I mean, anybody who can't vote with all those options, they've really got a problem. I really don't think they care that much about voting in the first place, right? That's how he talks. Anyway, Judith Brown and Dianis is the co-director of the Advancement Project. And Dale Ho is the director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project. I want both of you to have an unusual amount of freedom to talk now because I don't quite get what's going on here. It just seems to me that the Republicans figure out when black people vote and shut it down. Mm -hmm. It just seems that's what they do. Your thoughts? Right. It's, it's well, more complicated. Well, Chris, I mean, this is still out of the same playbook. Um, that's about making it harder to vote for partisan reasons. They're trying to manipulate the outcome of elections. They know that there are certain groups that you know, use early voting, that use Sunday voting with souls to the polls, where black churches use going caravan down to the polls with, with their congregations to vote in unison. Um, and what they've done is that they've gone after those voters. It's strategically crafted bills in order to hit those who are African American, Latino, younger voters who typically vote Democratic. Why now? Why in 2014, after you've had, at least on the books, uh, voting rights since the 60s uh, for minorities, especially. Why now the crackdown, the attempt to shut the door? On well, voting? I mean, you know, we continue to see this crackdown and this making it harder to vote. Voter suppression has come back and it's come back aggressively. And the reason that that is happening is because we're seeing changing demographics in America. Um, so the more people that you have of color in the country, we're seeing more people registering Democrat. And so this is a way to control <clears throat> and the outcome of elections you know, not only this year because they have a gubernatorial election, but for 2016. Yeah, you go at it because I see it the same way. I just keep looking at the pattern. It's like there's a cookie cutter. Somebody's going around from state to state saying, here's what you got to do. Your thoughts, your experience. It's really amazing. I mean, it's it, you, they could pick any day that they would want to get rid of. But for some reason, every one of these states, including Wisconsin, always wants to get rid of Sunday, which, as Judith pointed out, is a day in which you have particularly high African-American turnout. And I have to tell you, one of the things that really upsets me um, when I hear uh, some of these comments from legislators claiming that they need to do this in, 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 in the service of uniformity is kind of crazy to me. If there are problems with some people not having enough access in other parts of the state, the solution is not to shut down uh, early voting on the weekends in the places that have it, but to expand access for everyone. And it's also kind of crazy to me, this idea that every <coughs> community is exactly the same. It's not that uh, every place should have exactly the same hours and exactly the same number of polling locations. Milwaukee has 600,000 people. There are townships in Wisconsin that have only 10,000 people. Should they have the same number of voting machines now? Well, we'll see. Anyway, Republicans say these new laws like this are needed because rural voters might feel shortchanged. Well, Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald out there, Madison, defended the measure by saying, quote, it is difficult for people to turn on Channel 6 in Milwaukee and there's a shot of someone voting during a time when it's not available to people in rural areas. He went on. Here he is. They turn to us for the answer. Like, why is this going on? You know, why is uh, why are there people voting in Milwaukee on a Saturday afternoon when I couldn't go to the town of Climate and vote right now? There's nobody there. It's the, the town hall is closed and the lights are off. 
You know, I got to wonder whether, you know, you have big states and you have minorities often grouped in big cities and liberals in big cities who are white and all kinds of ethnic groups. They tend to be the liberal areas. They, they, they like wishes. They, it seems like they wish those areas weren't in the states. Right. They could have liked just Republicans outside the city limits. Right. I mean, this is, you know, looking at rural areas and comparing them to the cities. The bottom line, as Dale said, is let's increase access for everyone. We shouldn't be restricting the yeah. vote. What about I mean, seven o'clock? A lot of people we were talking about all the producers agreed about this today. We thought, look, mm -hmm. if if you go work, if you're a working person, you often right. work far from home. That's right. It's not your office nearby or your factory. So you get in a bus, public transportation. You may take two or three buses to get home, mm -hmm. certainly a couple. And by the time you do get home, you got to go get to the voting yeah. station. Seven o'clock could be a pretty tough deadline. That's right. I mean, can you imagine even the D.C. area in Virginia, yeah. seven o'clock closing? I mean, we know Shirley that, Highway. We know that right, That's right. We know our traffic takes an hour and a half yeah. to get home. And so cutting it off at seven o'clock really Why was would about somebody hitting, want to do that? Hit, it's about hitting working Americans who they are afraid will not vote for the Republican Party. Anyway, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett had some strong words for Republicans pushing this bill. Here's what he had to say, uh, what's really behind it. Here's his thought. Let's watch. You can see what the goal is here. The goal is to just jam up the city of Milwaukee and other large municipalities. Let's just jam it up. Let's have people frustrated and await and leave the polls. That's what's going on here. Is that it, Dale? Is that the bottom line? I really think it is, actually, Chris. I mean, you look at Florida, uh, which got rid of six days of early voting before the 2012 election, and they experienced the longest wait times of any state in the country during that election. Some people casting ballots after the president's acceptance speech. There was one estimate from an engineer at Ohio State University who calculated that 200,000 people gave up uh, uh, because the lines were too long in Florida. I don't know why any state would think that that would be a model that they'd want to emulate in future elections. It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, everyone ought to be able to participate in our democracy. It shouldn't matter whether or not you work hourly wage jobs that make it hard for you to vote on election day. Well, Judith, uh, in South Africa, back in the bad old days, they worried about an ultimate race war, and they said, we'll be in the lager. The whites will be in the lager, fighting all the blacks majority. Is this the lager for the Republicans? Well, I, I think Is this so. the way they're going mean, to fight the, the demographic change? This is the last change? stand. It's like, if we can control the vote, especially in Wisconsin, where Governor Scott Walker wants to control, not only, he wants to control the vote for a reason. To get Because it's about big. the policies, to get reelected so that he can push through his conservative right-wing agenda. And maybe to run for president. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Dale, how's this going to end? Is this going to stop or keep going? Uh, Is this well, battle going to go on to try to stop people from being able to vote, even our American citizens? You know, it's, it's really a shame that some people think that instead of trying to actually convince more people to vote for you, uh, that we should try to prevent people who might think differently uh, from, from voting at all. And this fight's going to go on, unfortunately, until we start changing people's minds and reminding everyone that your voice matters. It's not about whether or not you can pass some state-imposed obstacle course, that every person matters in our democracy. We have to get back to that basic principle of one person, one vote. We're litigating these kinds of cases right now um, alongside the Advancement Project, with, which uh, Judith uh, uh, is the head of, uh, in places like North Carolina. And you can bet that we're going to take this fight to other states that continue to cut back other uh, voting opportunities. Well, I could say, as a lover of politics, the great political leaders of our country and both parties over the years have trusted the voter. They're not afraid of the voters. That's how you can tell a great leader. Anyway, thank you, Dale Ho, and thank you, Judith Brown Dianis. Up next, everything's going green as Washington celebrates St. Patrick's Day or St. Patty's Day, as we always called it. We're going to talk about why so many Irish in this country have gotten into politics. And this is hardball, a place for it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 